There aren't many free agents still dangling four weeks into the process. Not four, it's only three weeks into the process. But even then, most of the big names have been gobbled up, whether they re-sign or join a new team. Let's do a draft, pop-up draft. Whoa. Players who will benefit the most from a fresh start in 2024. You're up. All right. Um, listen, I know we got some quarterbacks out there, but we talk about the quarterbacks a lot. I think the one I'm going to go with right away is, you know, talking about your, you know, Taylor ham and egg sandwich and your Taylor ham or pork roll, North Jersey or South Jersey. Well, North Jersey got raided by South Jersey, a.k.a. Philadelphia with Saquon Barkley. That's the one I think is going to be, to me, one of the most exciting signings of the free agency period. I mean, one, I'm a big fan of Saquon Barkley, the player, right, the person, all of it. You know, I think he's been in a situation as far as his NFL career where he hasn't been on a team that even gets to show his true full capacity of his talents. Now he's going to be with the best offensive line in football, good quarterback, receivers. Not everybody's going to be just worried about him. The field's going to be opened up. You know, I'm excited just to see what that looks like, to see what he looks like with all that space and, and that football team. I think that's going to be amazing to watch. I think you're right. He was on my short list. And there's this notion that maybe the Eagles will be able to use him more effectively, more more creatively that the Eagles are at a higher level than the Jets right now. So you bring in a guy like that, building your team from the inside out. Yeah. You get a weapon that can do a lot of different things, take some of the heat off of Jalen Hurts in the passing game and really help elevate the Eagles right. back to where they were a couple of years ago. I got to start with Russell Wilson for crying out loud. I mean, you because you think about where he was and it was just a disaster. And it was clear that Sean Payton, I mean, from the league meetings last week, it, it, the the clip is out there. Somebody says, "How hard was it? Hard to take eighty five million in dead cap money to move on from Russell Wilson?" No, <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, the Steelers, for as, as badly as Sean Payton didn't want him around, the Steelers wanted him, and we'll see how it goes. And I'm still not one hundred percent sure he's going to earn that starting job in training camp. He's got his work cut out for him with Justin Fields there, but. But night and day difference for Russell Wilson from being in a place where it just wasn't working. It was two years of ugliness. And now he goes to a place where, you know, let's ride, let's forge, let's do whatever. But uh, the it's it, it, for him, this is what he needs. Because as we've said in the past, he's got to resurrect his case for Canton. If the past two years continue, he may have to wait a long time to get in yeah he needs to turn it around it is next stop like kurt warner did when he got to the cardinals yeah I, I, yeah i would agree with you there right i mean but i, I mean agreed that i mean talk about a guy that benefited from a scenery change i mean we know he's gonna go out there and play and do all that but <laughs> it was in a no win situation nothing was good in denver and yeah now he at least has a you know a breath of fresh air ear, air here and he's gonna have to compete with justin fields we'll see where it goes we know he's in the leader house to be the starter there um I'm going to go to your, you know, an old teammate of yours, an old Viking. I'm going to go to Daniel, Daniel Hunter. Uh, that, to me, is one of the ones that I look at where I go, first off, Daniel Hunter is a freak of nature. He's one of the best pass rushers in football, right? And been in Minnesota, had the neck, neck injury, right? He's been a little unhappy with his contract situation the last few years, right? They obviously didn't want to extend him. It didn't feel comfortable paying him what he wanted to. So I think it's like, yeah, good. Hey, they, they got a replacement in Jonathan Greenard, but I think it's a great thing for Daniel Hunter, new place, new energy. And I think really going to a defense that is going to fit him even more. He's going to be, I think, unlocked to another level as a pass rusher. It's, it's just going to be like literally wide up, line up wide, go get the quarterback, don't think of anything else. And, and you know, Brian Flores' defense and these other defenses he's played the last few years, it's not necessarily just do that all the time. There's a little more thinking. There's some other stuff within the offense. But him with Will Anderson on the other side, too, that's where I also, the change of scenery, teams aren't just going to be able to double Daniel Hunter. They're going to pose some problems for people there. So I'm excited to see him in his new spot he had more sacks than anyone in the history of the nfl before the age of 25 now sacks has only been around as an official staff for 45 years or so but still the fast the most to 25 ever he had the neck injury for a year or so and there it's it's 
weird that he managed to stay in Minnesota as long as he did. He yeah. signed a longer term contract right. at like fourteen million a year, and then the market got to twenty seven, and he's been trying to get, you know, something that more fairly compensates him. Ever since then, he gets it in Houston. I agree with you. I think he's got the potential to be great. I'm going to go for a team that 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 he left the Vikings when they pick up Aaron Jones. Th- that happened so fast. And it felt so right for Jones, who who seemed. I remember when he said after the Packers lost in the divisional round, the future is really bright here. And I'm thinking you're not going to be part of it. You do to make eleven million, twelve million, and you 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 missed a bunch of games last year. There, I don't think you're going to be there. And uh, you know he rejected a pay cut. They signed Josh Jacobs, and he lands in Minnesota, and so he knows the division. He knows, you know, he, he loves going to Lambeau Field, and he. It it was what the Vikings needed at a time when Kirk Cousins had just walked out the door. You want somebody who wants to be there, and he's yep. still got some gas in the he tank. Does, we right. saw it late in the year when he did get healthy. He's got the potential to to you know make it closer to Dalvin Cook last year than it was with the revolving door of Alexander Madison and then Cam Akers for a little while, and then Ty Chandler. This stabilizes that position and will help take some of the pressure off of whoever the quarterback is. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's still got a, a, a big play explosive ability that I think is different than Madison or Dalvin Cook. That, that's the value of Aaron Jones. I, I'm, I'm with you there. I mean, you said it. We saw it at the end of the year. We saw it in the Dallas Wild Card game. We saw him rip off a 50-something yard run against the 49ers in the divisional playoff game. So he's that type of guy still, right, that can catch a screen on his own 35, and we can go, damn, he 65-yard touchdown on the screen. Uh, that's where he's special. Now, I saw him a few weeks ago. I think I told you, right? I saw him at the Madison Square Garden at the Big East Final Four. You know what he asked me about? He asked me about how we can help the running back market, and I was like, damn, uh, this is something Florio and I talk about all the time, and he was very interested and wanted to pick our brain about that going into the future. So wow. maybe we'll do wow. that. Yeah. They're trying to get the yeah. running backs together to figure out some solutions here. Right. So, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from him at some point, but you know, good for him. I like your we've, pick. We've yeah. been brainstorming ideas ever since it right. came up. I mean, right. then the season started and you kind of get away from it, but they're, they're in a tough spot. And, yeah. and he, he saw what happens. You get to a point in your contract where they look at you they look at how old you are. They look at what you cost, and they decide we can get somebody else. Yeah. Now they went with another veteran in Josh Jacobs, but you know inevitably they're gonna they're gonna draft somebody just like they drafted him because that's where you get the cheapest talent that is healthiest and in some ways even more effective. Those guys come out of the gates and off they go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. My pick. Here we go. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm going to Hollywood, baby. Hollywood, as in Kansas City, Missouri. Hollywood Brown, I think that's a guy that I look at. You talk about change of scenery that could change our whole perspective on the player, right? I mean, had some moments with Baltimore. It was underwhelming for a first-round pick. Arizona, we never really saw it. It hurt him a little bit. Of course, that Kyler got hurt and all that. But I still think there's gas in the tank here, like we talked about with Jadevion earlier on here. There's a guy here that still can – you know, go deep for a 50-yard bomb, catch a shallow cross, turn it up the sidelines, run for 50 yards. Uh, he doesn't need to be the, oh, he's got 100, and we got to give him a, the ball 110 times here. But I think he's going to have a real spot of value in this Kansas City offense, and they'll make a little niche for him as far as, hey, it's Kelsey, hey, it's Rasheed Rice and all that. And then, ooh, we got a few plays or – defenses forget about you and every game Hollywood comes away with like four or five receptions for 120 or 95 or whatever and I you know I think it's a great move for him and for Kansas City right there well and another reason that move may be more important. I know it's not otherwise on the outline today this popped up over the weekend right there was an incident in Dallas two cars were racing a Corvette and a Lamborghini there was a crash caused by the racing. This is what police believe. You're right. And what they know is one of the two cars in this accident is registered to Rishi Rice, who has been developing as a guy who can make a difference for the Kansas City Chiefs in the passing game. They were looking to talk to him. Nobody knows who was driving. Nobody knows if he was even on the scene. There were people on the scene who left 
who fled Sounds the like scene it. of this accident, right. which under Texas law and the law of most states can create a major problem. If there's an accident with injuries, if the operator of one of the cars involved leaves, you've got problems completely separate and apart from whatever you did or didn't do to possibly contribute to the crash. So that is percolating, and right. we're following that. It's a developing story where they want to talk to him and as best we can tell, I just checked in with the PFT writers. The latest news is, and I think Josina Anderson reported he's retained counsel. Well, probably a good idea to retain counsel when a car registered to you is involved in this incident and you're nowhere to be seen and anyone else in the car is nowhere to be seen. Because at some point he's got to sit down with somebody and talk this out. Right. So all the more reason, potentially, we don't know how it's going to play out. All the more reason for the Chiefs to have extra help at the position. Last one for me, and I hate to go back to Pittsburgh. But that's your second this favorite undercuts team. That's what I said it's earlier. Your favorite team. You love them so much, so we understand. Go back. Just make the, every uh, draft but how, the Steelers how, and the Vikings. Just do all that all the time. How how does Justin Fields not make it into this draft? Justin Fields clearly needed a fresh start. He got to hand pick his team, basically. He sees a path to playing. Now you know, they're all going to say this happens all the time. All the right things publicly. But, you know, Justin Fields targeted the Steelers because he looks at Russell Wilson and what he's done the past couple of years and thinks I could maybe win that job. And, yeah. you know, worst case scenario is I do enough that they decide between the two of us they're going to keep me for 2025. That's why he, you know, like the Eagles, to the extent that we look at them and say, well, why did they why did they trade for Kenny Pickett when they could have traded for Justin Fields, who's a better fit to what Jalen Hurts does? You know, beyond the possibility that Fields would be better and stuck on the bench, he's going to be stuck on the bench because they're not going to throw Jalen Hurts overboard. He's got an opportunity. No one's under contract after this year in Pittsburgh at quarterback. He's got an opportunity to prove to them this year that he should be the starter next year, regardless of whether he gets onto the field as the starter this year. Yeah, I think he can look at it in two ways, and he he can believe, one, that he's like, wait, I'm, I'm physically as good as Russell Wilson right now, if not better. I mean, we know he's a better runner, right? Can he throw it like Russell Wilson? I don't know. Probably not to that capacity, right? But it's still damn good. We saw a lot of big-time throws from Justin Fields. And then I think, like, you know, to your point too, Mike, you're right, there's, it's, there's no way – there's no political football attachment at quarterback for the starter right now. Yeah, Russell's the guy, and they're trying to frame it around him to a degree, but I don't think it's to such a degree where they're like, hey, you got no chance to play here. Russell's the starter. He's the man. We're just going to – it's bouquet of flowers and red carpet for him no matter what. No, he's, he's going to have to earn it. I mean, if Justin Fields comes out and just blows people away in training camp and has three awesome preseason games, right, and Russell's kind of like, eh, ooh, it didn't look that good, blah, 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 I don't think the Steelers are the type of group they're going to be like, well, you know, it's Russell, we're going to play him. I, they're going to play the guy they think they can win football games with. So that's where, you know, I totally understand Justin Fields' uh, position in this. Short-term play, long-term play, there's a lot of possibilities here. That, that's for sure. In the flurry of news last week that came out of Orlando yeah. with the rule changes, with all the different sound bites, I think the one thing that got overlooked yeah. for its implications right. is Mike Tomlin, the coach of the Steelers, saying that Russell Wilson is in the pole position. Pole position means nothing. Yeah, Pole position means you're the guy that gets to start the race first. Right. How many times does a guy in pole position not win the race? Yeah. You just get to start first, and you might get passed. You might get passed early. And, you know, we, we've talked about this before. It's not like Russell Wilson is going to huff and puff and threaten to blow somebody's house down. He's got to be good soldier this year. And they have him at $1.2 million. I saw a few weeks ago somebody said, oh, he might get cut before week one. We've talked about this. Why would you cut him? First of all, Justin Fields, if he leapfrogs him, could get injured. And you've got a veteran backup with a Super Bowl win under his belt for $1.2 million. Exactly. You're not letting him walk away. That's it. So, so he hasn't been promised anything. He hasn't been given anything other than pole position, which ultimately is not relevant to the outcome of the race. It has some relevance to the direction the race is going to go. But if the wheel comes off, it doesn't matter that you were in pole position. So we'll see what happens with Justin Fields there. But he handpicked Pittsburgh because yep. he sees that as the place where he can 
resurrected. You good? Do you want right, to pick any more Vikings or Steelers players for the draft? Anybody else you're missing? You want to get Patrick Queen for this draft? Yeah, I pick or, can I? Can I? You know, is can anybody I, else? Can I? Uh, you mentioned Aaron Jones wanted to talk about uh, running back market. Could we get Aaron Jones to co-host? Could we do that? Ooh. Maybe we maybe we expand the draft <laughs> to a different uh, right <laughs> industry. All right. Uh, I mentioned the rule changes from last week, and I I talked about something on Friday, and Chris and I have put our heads together on this, and I've gone back to the league. We're gonna we're gonna clarify the existence of what could be a problematic loophole for the NFL that they might want to deal with between now and May as they adjust to the ramifications of the new kickoff formation. We'll do that next here on PFT Live. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.